The song came and went Like the times that we spent Hiding out from the rain Under the carnival tent I'd laugh and she'd smile It would last for a while You don't know what you got Till you lose it all again Listen to the mandolin rain Listen to the music on the lake Oh, listen to my heart break Every day hey, it's Tom here. I have missed you all so much and I want to apologize for um, the delay in me putting out videos and in the delay in my getting back to you and your comments. Um, unfortunately, the issue with my mom, she's still um, very, very ill. Um, so I'm taking it one day at a time and trying to put out videos when I can. But again, sorry for the delay um, in, in getting back to, to you guys. And I do so appreciate your support and um, your encouragement and understanding. But this evening, I thought I would try to knock out a quick video and just do a top five early fall. Um, these are the ones that I have found myself going to um, the most uh, during the months of um, September and going into October here. It's been unusually cold here, um, so I've, I've found myself going more to the the heavier fragrances. Um, a couple of days it was uh, there was actually frost on the ground. It was 29 degrees Fahrenheit one morning when I woke up. So right now these are my top five for early fall. Okay, so the first one um, <clears throat> that I've been going to uh, frequently, which is kind of a surprise because when I first purchased it, um, I thought it was rather ordinary, but now I'm liking it more and more. And that one is, the first is La Colina Toscana's Maremas Tobacco. Um, this one, it's uh, from a fragrance house, comes from Milan, Italy. This is 100 ml um, EDT. It actually wears more like an EDP, in, in my opinion. Um, and the reason that I didn't care for it, um, or didn't, it, it's not that I didn't care for it, it's just that I thought it was rather... Um, average when I first got it because it reminded me of just the typical standard gentleman's fragrance and nothing really jumped out at me but then the longer that I wore it um, the more beautiful it, it became to me um, it's a traditional masculine fougere is what I would say um, the top is got nutmeg um, cinnamon, bergamot, and coriander, uh, the mid lavender and geranium, and then at the base, musk, leather, cedar, and sandalwood. Uh, this is not available in the United States. It's the only place I could find it was from, um, it's an uh, obscure perfume shop in Sweden. Um, but it was $85 shipped, including the insurance and postage, which I didn't think was a bad deal. And it came fairly quickly. To me, um, the beauty in this is that it is a traditional masculine, and it isn't as humdrum as I thought when I first sprayed it. Um, you get that nutmeg accord in the middle, and a little bit of the cinnamon, so it's got that masculine spice to it. Um, as it dries down more into the middle, very light lavender. I don't get that real strong. It's there. Um, but the spice predominates, and then you get a nice kind of a leathery sandalwood base. So if you're in the mood for something um, real masculine uh, and kind of comforting uh, during a colder snap, I would say this would be an excellent choice uh, for fall. That um, at first I wasn't crazy about, but the more I wore it, the more I liked it. And I've been in a gourmand kind of mood here recently so um, a lot of the like vanilla fragrances and uh, the gourmandish spicy fragrances like the ombre nargile um, I've been wearing the sushi imperial so I've been in the, the mood for 
kind of gourmandish um, fragrances just because to me they're kind of warm and comforting for this time of year and this time of temperature. So one that I've been going to more and more frequently here recently is uh, the Ramon Movizar, um perfume, um, Art and Silver. This is a unisex uh, fragrance and I classify it to me as a gourmandish type fragrance. Sorry about the clack, that's like a wood box and very heavy. But um, I enjoy the presentation, enjoy the bottle. This is the 75 ml parfum. And to me, squarely unisex. It is sweet. The top is supposed to be orange, orange blossom, pettigrain, almond, lychee, and rose. In the mid, uh, peony, honey, um, and locum. And then in the base, iris, musk, raspberry, vanilla, um, and tonka. And I would say it reminds me of a gourmand combined with a floral, which is kind of cool. There, you definitely pick up the rose um, in this, uh, as well as um, the gourmandish notes. So I get quite a bit of the tonka. I get quite a bit of the lychee and the almond note so there's kind of a nuttiness to it and under that once it dries down you do get that musk um projection and longevity on this are very good um and again it's like a warm sensuous floral gourmand um and i do enjoy wearing it i i would say it's squarely unisex it's definitely not uber masculine due to the sweetness um, from the florals, the peony rose combination. But it's really cool because you get that background of kind of like um, lychee, vanilla, tonka, and then some type of berry, like a raspberry, strawberry kind of feeling to it. So I'm enjoying this one a lot, and it's my number two for early fall. So speaking of gourmand, coming in at number three, and I have been wearing a lot of this, just wow. I, I just, I adore this one. Um, sorry about the light. I suck at this showing the bottle. Sorry guys. But, um, Pharmacia SS Annunciada Dal 1561 Beniglia del Madagascar. This is, if you saw my video on it, it is my holy grail vanilla. Um, and I just think, wow, it is just phenomenal. There are several fragrances that are just fascinating from this house, um, and this is one of them. It's just, it's a classic full-bodied vanilla. But the thing that I like about it is it's not like a sugar cookie vanilla. It almost, right off the bat, it reminds me kind of a tobacco vanilla combination. Although I don't believe that tobacco is listed in the note breakdown for this. But there's a, a hint of lemon just to break the sweetness a little bit at the top and then a little bit of florals, very little. And then it's all about vanilla, Madagascan vanilla. Um, and I would say unisex men wouldn't have any problem wearing it. Um, it would be beautiful as well on a woman. Um, this is actually a parfum concentration, 100 ml, 1.4 fluid ounce. So parfum concentration in a bottle this big is pretty phenomenal. Um, they make several uh, scents this from Florence, Italy, uh, this fragrance house. Um, I kind of liken them to um, Pharmacia Santa Maria Novella, um, which is another uh, amazing um, fragrance house, perfumery, um, slash pharmacy, uh, cosmetics company. But, um, this one definitely is a winner. Uh, Pharmacia SS Annunciata, Adult 1561, Farenze, Italy, Veniglia de Madagascar. Okay, where am I at? Number four. Number four. So, uh, I've been wearing a lot of this one. Uh, it is for number four, L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme O Extreme. <laughs> This one is hard to find in the U.S. And I actually called at the time that I purchased it. Um, I called the 
Miguel and Bertique at Bergdorf Goodman uh, in New York, and they told me that it's just not available um, here in the States, that when you're going through a duty-free, um, headed back into, like, like headed to, to Mexico or overseas, that they're easy to, sometimes easy to find at the duty-free shops. Um, but in the States, they're uh, just difficult to find. This is the 75 ml 2.5 fluid ounce O Extreme uh, version of L'Instant de Guerlain. It was launched in 2005 um, as the richer version of the original um, fragrance Perfumier Beatrice Piquet. Um, so the notes in this are it opens with like a little bit of a anise kind of citrus deal and then um, there's some a little bit of patchouli flower in it, some jasmine, a little tea, and then it, the base is uh, supposed to be Mysore sandalwood, uh, cacao, and a little patchouli and hibiscus seed. With this, to me, Everybody always says fall, 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 but I think, and my friend Vitor Hyvie, I think agrees with me, uh, and he's really the one that turned me onto this. Uh, I'm still waiting for his video on it. Um, he, he and I both agree that I think it could be a year-round fragrance. It is incredibly strong. I would say one spray, <laughs> two max, and you're good to go, especially if you're doing it in the summer, but I think it'd be great on a summer night. And the other point uh, that he made and that I agree with is the cacao. I was expecting from watching reviews a blast of chocolate, like Hershey's chocolate, and that's not the case with this. With, with this, if you have ever been to the tropics and when you pick the cacao off the tree, it grows in pods off the bark of the cacao tree that they make cocoa and chocolate from, they open it up and inside are these creamy looking white seeds that smell like citrus that you can actually chew and eat like candy, um, eat the, the, the stuff off the seeds and spit out the seed. That's the smell I get from this, the raw cacao, not necessarily chocolate, cocoa, hot chocolate chocolate or candy bar chocolate, but that citrusy cacao smell that you get from the cacao tree. Um, very deep, very rich, very masculine, beautiful fragrance, very different um, from most that are out there. Um, I would say it's a contemporary um, masculine and it's absolutely gorgeous and definitely appropriate from this time of year. Longevity and projection are beast on this. Go easy on the spray. And finally, guys, uh, just because it's colder out um, and we've had the cold temperatures that we've had, I was looking for something and in the mood for something deep and rich, and boy, does this um, come through. <laughs> it is, um, uh, sorry, here we go again, Zerzhoff Richwood from their 1717 range um, in Grasse, France. Um, Sergio Momo from the, Sir, the Zerjoff 1717 collection, The Earth Laughs and Flowers, Zerjoff Richwood. And this is all about, as you know, the Mysore. The uh, Mysore sandalwood, a little bit of citrus accord, some rose, and some patchouli. And if you're not a fan of strong fragrances, deep, rich fragrances this would not be uh, for you but the the centerpiece here is is the Mysore which is as as you know one of the most rare and hard to find and expensive ingredients in modern perfumery today um, it's just all about the sandalwood and the the supporting notes are used to elevate the sandalwood and put a spotlight on it really. Um, it's earthy, um, a little bit of like the dark rose and the patchouli as supporting players, and then it just lets that beautiful, creamy, rich sandalwood um, shine through. Uh, absolutely beautiful fragrance. Uh, again, a spray. <laughs> uh, as with all uh, Zerja fragrances, you don't need much. A little goes a very long way. One spray, two max. 
last four days. <laughs> you could, if you don't shower, you would probably still smell it into the next day. Um, it is just uh, an incredibly beautiful fragrance, and this is the one um, that I've worn, been wearing quite a, a great deal on those um, cooler fall evenings and even uh, during the cool fall days. Uh, beautiful fragrance. I hope you've enjoyed um, my early fall top five picks. I'm going to try to come out with a late fall top five um, and maybe do a sample impression coming up next. I'm kind of toying with the idea of doing a Q&A like some of the others, other reviewers have done. So let me know what, what you would like to see next. If you would like to see a Q&A or if you want me to do a sample first impression or what you guys are in the mood for. So Thank you again for your patience and for your continued support and watching. Um, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, have a good night. Take care.